get started. Um, we are recording this session. My name is Brenda Beckedorf. I am the Executive Director to Alberta IoT. Alberta IoT is a nonprofit organization focused on the um, interest in having our um, members and the IoT community be successful in the province of Alberta, but also to look at making sure that we have a worldwide presence. One of the exciting things with us is that throughout the month we have different keynote speakers and we're very, very excited today to have Paul join us um, from Osperity to turn around and speak. So I'm going to let Paul introduce himself and then I'll talk a little bit more about the different um, activities after this event. So Paul, I'll let you take over. Excellent. Well, thank you everyone for coming in um, today. I'm sure we're all webinar to death. I know uh, myself, it can get overwhelming, so I won't take much time. Um, myself, I'm the COO of Osperity. Uh, Osperity is a um, visual uh, artificial intelligence company uh, in mainly in the space of oil and gas. Sorry, I'm just having a tech glitch here. Everything just went blank. There we go. Um, and what I'm gonna go through here is, we've really found, and what I think is exciting from our perspective, which I guess I have to share my screen, is the fact that through COVID, we've really been able to, um, to validate our technology with our clients. And a uh, little background on Osperity, uh, you may have known it previously as Osprey Informatics. Um, <clears throat> January 1st, we changed the name uh, it seemed that everybody um, in North America that had anything to do with visual analytics was calling themselves Osprey something. So we just wanted to differentiate ourselves um, a little bit, but not deviate from our brand. So we made up a word. Um, our CEO likes to describe it as it sounds like prosperity, but that's not necessarily what potential clients want to hear. So. Um, yeah, it, it's Osperity. We've been around, we've been commercialized six years. Um, we've got almost 60 uh, commercial clients uh, in North America and Australia. Um, we have uh, 900 um, instances in the field across uh, just under 300 uh, sites, geographical sites. So I'll go through. Um, this here and speak a little bit about our uh, technology. So what do we do? So we are, an sorry, we are an enterprise platform um, of the true management by exception model and our IOT device or uh, technology is visual sensors or cameras. And we can do both, um, provide the camera systems or you, we're camera agnostic. So what we're finding is we're applying our edge computing device, which we call a cloud bridge in many locations where there's unintelligent visual solutions, which may be a CCTV system for security. Now operations wants to take 15 or 20 of those cameras and apply our analytic platform on top of the existing system. So the nice thing with a video sensor is there's two feeds. So we can actually take that feed, connect it to our edge device, um, and start the process of real-time analysis in the field. So the way our process works in the field is <clears throat> we're constantly recording with a multitude of cameras. An average site is four cameras. Um, and that information is fed to our cloud grid. There's two purposes. It's layer one of our analytics. The second purpose is it's an NVR. So they have ability to go back prior to an incident and see if there was anything that happened there as well. So what the cloud bridge does is it, it becomes 60% certain that it's an exception that the client, someone within the enterprise wants to be alerted to. So from there, we take that video and quickly dissect it into photographic image chunks 
for bandwidth efficiency and then send it to the cloud where we apply our AI assisted computer vision on top of it. And then the, the, the cloud says, this is definitely something that Brenda wants to see right now, but you know, Paul's fine looking at it um, in a daily report and Steve's good just to look at it the next time he goes on the platform. But a single camera can be running a multitude of analytics throughout the enterprise. And I'll get a little more into that. The other thing that we can do is both export this data to um, uh, asset management platforms or you know, something like IBM's Watson, uh, as well as bring in other sensor data and corroborate that uh, vibration sensor with uh, uh, a live video of the pump jack to actually give them a full picture of what's happening in the field when they have SCADA alarms going off. <clears throat> so we provide that remote view and management by exception through alerting um, aspect to the uh, whole uh, field experience. One of the biggest things when we look at the topic of managing through change and disruption and coronavirus um, is we have um, an automated autonomous inspections module built into our system. And starting March 13th through till probably about the end of June, we had 50% of our clients um, have over 100% increase in users of just the remote inspections piece because most of the companies weren't allowing as much access to sites or they were using it to monitor contractors. So one of the things that this does is in, in, in I guess the old normal, we had operators in the oil and gas industry that would go around every couple of days and look at the physical assets or these locations would be manned eight, 12, 24 hours a day. <clears throat> what happened when COVID came was a lot of those became unmanned and a lot of organizations, the first couple of months had to figure out what their return to site procedures were gonna be. What we were able to enable them to do is do both those regulatory inspections, but also allow them to uh, do their own mandated inspections. So, you know, in Alberta, the AER has one set of regulations as to how often a site needs to be inspected. In the state of Minnesota, where we've got uh, a multitude of, of systems with a client, they have a completely different set of, of regulations of what they want inspected and how often. So what we did was these are pan tilt zoom cameras that we use. So we can remotely adjust those cameras to meet those inspection points. So there was no need for us to go to the field. Um, and add this module to our clients' um, current offering of analytics. There's nothing analytic about this, but it enabled them to reduce their site visits um, next to zero uh, during the, the pandemic. And, and it's changed the way they do their workflow within the organization going forward because of the cost savings. So what it generates is, is a, a report that once they get onto the platform, they can, so it's emailed to them, that clicks them into our platform. And that then enables them to be able to make notes, look at the video associated with that image, um, and do all those pieces. And as I mentioned, in some cases, those are then sent to other, um, uh, other software programs as well. So they're seen further down the line. What, what our true technology is, is a management by exception model. So really reducing um, costs, creating huge efficiencies um, in, in personnel. And some of the things and areas that we work in, we're, we're very penetrated with a couple companies in their refined products, transportation terminals. And these, Two, two of these three, or three of these four examples, sorry, relate to that, where we've developed or, or retrained uh, algorithms we had to actually enable um, different analytics. So, you know, alerting that there is a person there watching this unload 
or in this case load, or in the case of the railway tracks, alerting when a locomotive is coming around um, the corner so that they can have an operator open the gate so they don't just have cars of, of product drop there and not shunted to the proper sidings. Underlying and, and history in the company, six years ago, the company was started as 100% uh, remote security for the oil and gas industry. We evolved very quickly um, into developing operational analytics um, where you're timing vehicles at risers, you're alerting to a multitude of different things because those actually have a cost savings to them. Security in an organization is an underlying or overriding expense all the time. So there's no way to prove an ROI. Um, the fact that you caught them doesn't save the fact that they lost $50,000 in product. When you look at the security and operational monitoring side, this is a prime example of what did, what we did help a security uh, at one producer do was um, they were losing um, over a period of three months, they lost about $50,000 Canadian um, a week from 39 different sites. And what we were able to do was pick the, the, the biggest targeted, targeted ones um, for obviously copper theft, product theft, and we're not including the downtime that these thefts cost. Um, we were able to reduce that to zero within three weeks. Uh, and that was just because they had the visibility um, and in conjunction with a physical security um, company, they were able to dispatch the RCMP to these sites and the, the criminals just stopped going there. Uh, interesting fact, uh, NICE being cloud-based and LTE en enabled, um, even when the cameras get cut and stolen, the clients uh, or the criminals are definitely captured uh, and, and caught. Um, you know, some of the other, you know, things that we're doing around uh, uh, product movement is alerting to and validating with other platforms a visual validation of the arrival and departure of product moving vehicles, whether it be a train or it be a truck. Um, theft is rampant uh, in the liquids business in North America, both from the, you know, from the freshwater side, from LPG, from, you know, uh, crude, it, it's, it's terrible. Um, and it's really actually getting really bad in the Southern US in the Permian. So we do a lot of validation around those items and alerting. Uh, on the environmental side, we do a lot of work with thermal cameras around uh, the SAG-D world um, in, in Canada, um, as well as uh, flare stack monitoring, uh, more so in the US. There, uh, Colorado's obviously um, just had some, some significant changes to their regulations this year around smoke and size of flame. And that's actually what we're alerting to in the case of this picture is color of smoke as well as size of flame. So they can remotely turn it down or turn it off as well. And then of course, you know, again, you know, inspections and access and, and being uh, uh, informed when things change at a site uh, for a client. Again, you know, we're talking about uh, a lot of different things, but they all seem to come back to the same. Um, but there's various different analytics that we have in the cloud and on the edge that's enabling these, you know, 15 second reports after an event happens to stimulate um, the client's actions. One of the things that um, we do and we're, we're very strong in is the midstream market. And that's become a very demand uh, market. Um, and, and I can say we're moving these same technologies into the electrical utility space, um, as well as the mining space um, globally uh, right now. And one of the things is, is understanding what's going on and being alerted to what's happening 
um, at the operation control center. <clears throat> so when you look at a midstream client, um, they're offloading product into the pipeline all the time, the independent contractors for the EMP companies. And they're out there alone in, in very precarious uh, positions and predicaments sometimes. And what I have here is a video and I'll talk you through how our system um, uh, enabled a, a, quite a few things from a single camera. So I'll preface this with, yes, we do have permission to use it. And no, nobody was injured in this. Um, just give me a second here to make it full screen. There we go. So this truck has pulled up to a riser, 9.30 UTC time. So it's early in the morning, uh, very remote. It's uh, 250 miles outside of Grand Prairie somewhere. And what happens is their operations control center is alerted when a truck pulls in and they subsequently start to watch the live feed of that truck. Um, and here you can see that there's been a blowout that's condensate that's blowing um, onto the cab of the truck. The operator has got trying to get his wits about him, but the, our client has already dispatched and alerted their um, environmental services team. This particular location needs an immediate response. They've also used two-way communications to tell the driver, go shut your trailer off because you're offloading to reduce the, um, the spillage. Um, and now you'll see the next phase, um, the truck exploded. And this is all in you know, a minute and 20 seconds. So they've now dispatched their, the first responders in the area, as well as their internal investigators, all within a five minute period of this incident occurring. So there's the, the now that they were alerted to that happening. Their response time was bang on. Um, fortunately, no one was injured in a case like that. People could be injured with the inability to communicate. But what it did for them down the road was having that historical video on the edge was we're able to pull that and they're able to use it for their purposes to do an investigation. And what was found was four hours earlier, there was a vacuum truck there that actually crimped the riser and there was a piece of metal that penetrated um, the hose when it was attached. So the, the, our system actually was a big part in assigning responsibility. And if you can imagine the number of organizations and companies sitting around the table when this investigation started, um, our client said that it was at a minimum six months of time saved and a million dollars in, in, in costs. Um, by the fact that they had responded so quickly, they were able to solve the problem so quickly, uh, and they were able to settle the problem so quickly. So there's a lot to the analytics side and there's a lot to the use of video for uh, a multitude of post event pieces. That not being our specialty, but that's available to the client, it's their imagery. Um, some of the neat technologies that, that we're working on um, right now from a visual side um, is the ability to detect um, PPE. That's actually commercialized as of Monday. That is in the field now. So we're able to alert to hard hat on or off and they're wearing of uh, reflective vest or overalls, whichever is required at the site and they vary because we also uh, work in the uh, construction field as well. Um, we're tying in, we're working with two um, uh, institutions in the US um, to apply audio analytics uh, to our platform um, because in many cases, uh, the, the engineers and the remote people want to understand what something sounded like before it failed or be alerted to an audio anomaly within a piece of equipment so they can shut it down remotely. Um, external uh, tank level monitoring. So being able to um, view from the external a series of tanks and independently report on the water levels, the hydrocarbon levels by percentage 
um, that's in field trials right now. Um, liquid leak detection from the perspective of water um, and crude. Uh, and then we're working uh, with a commercial partner client in the US and AWS on some advanced thermal analytics um, that, that I hope in a year we can do a, uh, this all over again and show you some, some really incredible um, technology that uh, Alberta has devised that, that the world's looking for. So, you know, there's, there's a lot to um, what we do and, and in, for the sake of time, I welcome anyone here to reach out um, to, to us. Um, we're headquartered here in Calgary uh, and we have an office in, in Houston as well. But from the, uh, going back to the title of the whole uh, uh, talk here is one thing that came up very quickly after uh, the new normal set in was we need something we need to put in right now. I'm not gonna be able to get budget approved, make it an operational expense. So we very quickly, um, by the end of March, had that hardware product available uh, and I will stress again, we're a software company, but we have a very good operations team uh, and about 50% of our installations involve us um, putting the, soft, the hardware together. Um, and we created a hardware as a service model so they could drop this into their operational expenses and put a camera on site uh, with an LTE modem with a, with a very micro uh, computer uh, and, and storage device that might cover up to five days as opposed to 30 or 45 from an MVR position um, and be able to offer it to them at $125 a month over a three year period. So it really escalated um, getting things to the field when something like this happened. <clears throat> and the majority of this was with existing clients that were familiar with what we did but need very quick deployment. And I think that's, you know, from an IoT standpoint, I think that's really important is how quick can your company pivot a little bit to meet the demand of, of uh, you know, a need like this. Um, I'll be honest, we weren't ready for it. We have been playing with this particular um, idea for a few years now, literally two years. Uh, because nobody ever asked for one camera. Um, but we had all the components and it was just putting them together to test it and, and get it in the field. So, you know, there, there is a lot around that uh, quick ability to pivot. So, you know, uh, from an industry validation, like I mentioned, you know, we've got uh, multiple clients in North America. We have two clients in Australia um, and, and we're growing every day um, as an organization. And, uh, you know, for us, our technology was validated by the, 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 the crisis that we're all in right now. And it's multifold in the energy industry <clears throat> from a pricing crisis and then also COVID crisis. So um, there's a multitude of applications that we fit into um, with both large and small clients. So I'll just uh, turn it over to Brenda now. And so I was going to, thank you. Thank you, Paul. I was going to say we've got at least one question here. Do you see that popped up on your screen? No, you know what? I don't because I had okay. my right PowerPoint on my screen. Let me just uh, pull that down and make it big. And where did that go? Oh, here we go. Oh. So, yeah, so we have, with the quick hardware solution for March, how were you able to manage in strength safety requirements and certification for the hardware? So, uh, and you know what? Uh, fantastic question. Um, we generally work outside of the hazardous zone. So when we put these on a pump jack or anything like that, we, um, will be back far enough because of optical zoom, we can be outside the zone. To, to that point, we do have rated enclosures um, that are class one div one, class one div two, and also all of the uh, components that 
our modems, our, um, our edge compute device, and our switches are all CSA approved. So <clears throat> it was, and, and by no means, I don't wanna say we were quick to do this. Like I said, we had been looking at this for 18 to 24 months, uh, but never had the need. So we'll go from there. And yeah. do you see Stan's question? Yeah, what is a business model, licensing model, per sensor, per tech? Uh, great question. Um, again, we are, our model is uh, fully managed software as a service, right down to the point of the LTE. Um, it's a per device um, cost. So uh, there's a monthly uh, fee per device uh, in the field. And for us, a device is a camera. Uh, we offer unlimited seats as an enterprise platform uh, to use it. Uh, and we go, you know, we go from there, uh, from pricing. We have some service models that we do from an administrative perspective of uh, reporting and such for clients on incidents, uh, but that's outside of the standard service. So that's, that's where I can go there. Our hardware is available as a CapEx or a hardware as a service. Uh, over a three-year term. So Rob has a question for you too. For the temp and humidity specs of your camera, how do they perform in extreme plus 40, minus 40 temps? Great, again, a great question. Um, uh, we actually ensure they're all industrial IP cameras. Um, we ensure at a minimum that they're minus 40 and plus 40 um, because we do deal in the humidity of South Texas uh, and Australia, uh, as well as the cold climes of places like Christina Lake. So there's a couple things. So our edge, dev our, our edge compute um, device uh, for the US is a fanned uh, device, which generally they aren't with the solid state drives. Um, the cameras are all rated to that. Um, these aren't your ring doorbell cameras, you know, these, these start in the $1,500 range. Um, but at the end of the day, they're, you know, the humidity, um, that's a million dollar question. We can get in the building within a building, it changes, but we have different control factors. And one of the other ones that we've learned a lot about is um, uh, being in the Permian and growing quickly down there is um, lightning suppression. So we've got to take all these into consideration to be able to actually just get it on the site through their electrical engineering teams. Great questions. Any others before we, uh, yeah. any others questions before we finish up? So thank you, Paul. Um, we will be sending out a note later today with Paul's um, the recording of the session and the slide deck so you can review it and of course Paul's contact information so if you want to reach out to Paul directly. Um, also to coming up for August we have our monthly meeting. We're going to switch it up. We're not going to have a speaker in August. We're going to have a breakout sessions so it gives you a chance to meet each other and have conversation and of course our golf tournament is coming up September 18th. So again, thank you, Paul. Thank you for all attending and uh, have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Take care, everyone.